From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Open Line. Well, good evening and welcome into Open Line. I'm Chuck Long. Glad to be along with you this evening. Tonight is Ask the Expert, and we're so glad that it's Ask the Entodontist. And Dr. Richard Horwat, one of our favorite guests, is going to be with us for the next hour. Now, when you talk about the entodontist, a lot of times it comes to root canals and, and tooth pulp and cracked teeth and that sort of thing. But we have a wide array of topics that uh, you can call about when it comes to your mouth, the upkeep, uh, some of the advice that you want from Dr. Horwat. Happy to answer those questions and those comments throughout the evening. And as always, the number to call is 737-7587. That's 737-7587. Now, welcome, Dr. Horwart. Good to see you as, as always. Nice to be here again. All right. Well, you know, when you're here, we always get a lot of calls. And, you know, when it comes to the, the mouth, though, I mean, people have a lot of reason for questioning. Now, endodontist, <clears throat> let's just start off. What is the number one reason someone goes to see the endodontist? I think the main reason would be uh, they have tooth pain. Um, a lot of times they'll go to their general dentist first and they'll have a toothache. They're not really sure why they have it. And then um, the general dentist might, they might run, go through a few tests themselves. Some general dentists will do the root canals themselves, but, but uh, generally a lot of times the tougher cases, they'll go ahead and refer them out to the endodontist uh, to get a root canal. Ma main reason is because of pain though. Right, and a lot of times people, like you said, are at their, their dentist and the dentist refers mm -hmm. to you. When you're getting a root canal, I think we, we talk about this often, but I think people, there's a stigma mm -hmm. that getting a root canal is this major, you're going to be out of work for several days, it's mm -hmm. going to take several days, there's a lot of pain involved, so kind of clear away that, that myth, that fallacy. That is, that, that, that's not accurate anymore. You know, I think maybe 30 years ago, uh, anesthetics weren't as strong as they were, and uh, root canals <coughs> definitely have a bad rap. I think on most root canal cases, you know, I, I don't want my patients to feel anything. Uh, on, on most of my cases, a uh, patient comes in, um, we just get them numbed up under local anesthetic. Uh, usually it's a pretty quick procedure. We can get most of them done in about an hour's time, uh, depending on where the location or w which tooth it is. And um, pretty much at the end of the procedure, the only thing we have them taking most of the time is Motrin or ibuprofen, uh, 600 milligrams. So it's really not a painful procedure anymore. And usually you might, I usually tell my patients that they might be, um, the injection sites are usually tender for a couple of days and uh, we call our patients the very next day always and um, uh, most of them tell us that, it, that their post-operative discomfort is minimal at best. And when you're having a root canal, I mean, as far as that process, as far as what you're doing in a root canal, you're basically, if I'm not mistaken, clearing out the tooth we are. We are. You have, um, I always describe it to my patients like it's like taking lead out of a pencil. You know, um, I always tell them that uh, we're removing the lead from the pencil, we're taking the chamber where that lead resides, resides and, and we're kind of opening that chamber up and then we're sterilizing the inside of it. And then where that lead, where the nerve was, we're replacing that with, um, with an inert material and so that the, um, the tooth can't transmit pain anymore. Now they can still have this comfort um, for, for different reasons in the future, if a root canal doesn't work out, they can get um, what we call um, periapical inflammation. Uh, but the tooth itself can't transmit pain anymore once we get the nerve out of there. And then when you've had the root canal, so basically the tooth is dead at that point. I mean, when you do the root canal, is that correct? After the root canal? At, after the root canal. Uh, it's removed. It's okay. It's removed. Uh, it, it might feel like it's dead because it has the same sensation, but technically it's not dead. It, it's, it's gone. It's missing. It's removed. And you recommend, though, if at all possible, keep the tooth because sometimes people I, say pull the tooth and then do something else. I do. I think, you know, I have a lot of patients that have uh, root canal teeth. I have a lot of patients that have implants uh, as well. And I think that most of them uh, like the way their teeth feel having had a root canal and a crown as opposed to having the implant um, and the crown. But you know, there are cases that come to my desk. I had one today, as a matter of fact, where um, sometimes we get in there, the decay is just a little bit um, um, deeper than we would like it to be. And, uh, and when that's the case, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll always go over the risks, the alternatives, the benefits to the patient. Um, and I'll usually tell the patient what I would do if it were in my mouth. And um, sometimes I do think it's, it's better for the patient to just have the tooth removed. Um, some patients are pretty adamant about keeping teeth uh, that aren't fixable as well. And um, sometimes we will make um, efforts to do heroics. And I kind of enjoy doing the heroic stuff. So. I'm sure that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a good thing to be able to do. Yeah. All right, right now we're going to go to the lines. Right now Jay is on the line with us. Jay, do you have a question or a comment for Dr. Horwat? Are you there, Jay? Um, 
I just had a question. Uh, I'm 40 years old now. I've got great teeth, and I, I chew a lot of gum. How much <coughs> should I do, you know, at my age? I mean, I love gum. I chew a lot, and I was just wondering what your, what your advice was. Thanks. Uh, regarding gum, I was told, or I was, I was told that gum was actually invented by a dentist. Um, it's supposed to stimulate salivary flow. It's actually really good for you. A lot of the gums have sugar in it, though, and you want to be careful because you really don't want to. Uh, if you're having gum in your mouth and you have the sugar, um, you know, most of the gums nowadays, too, the types of sugars that they use. If you notice, you'll chew gum and it'll lose its flavor pretty quickly, and that's because they, the, the, the gum companies know as well. Uh, that the sugar is bad for you and they don't want it to sit there and fester in your mouth for a long period of time. But there are sugar alternatives, there are sugar free gums as well. Um, I'm not trying to promote any particular type of gum, but I was also told that there's a gum out called Orbit, and Orbit got its name from a type of sugar called Sorbitol. And Sorbitol is supposed to be a type of sugar or sweetener uh, that actually prevents cavities. I was told that uh, once Wrigley found this out that Wrigley actually bought the Orbit company and now if you look at the Orbit gum if you look closely you'll see a little tiny thing on it that says Wrigley's and so um, but uh, I think chewing gums are, is great I, when I have patients that have a problem with dry mouth <coughs> I always recommend for them to, to start chewing gum and, and things of that nature gum gum isn't isn't a bad thing necessarily uh, just stay away from the ones that have a lot of sugar in them okay good thanks for the call Jay now is it possible for a tooth to recover and not need a root canal once it, it is. Does. It okay. is. A lot of times a patient will get a filling, and um, depending on how far away, you know, the nerve is inside the root structure, and depending on how close that filling is to the actual nerve, um, when the nerve is insulted or injured, it, it, it's like having any type of um, operation or any type of surgery. It, it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. And the nerve itself will actually add to its structure, and the nerve will shrink. And um, so you may have a little bit of post-operative discomfort uh, for a few days, and, um, and then the nerve does recover itself. It's, we call that reversible pulpitis. We might have a patient that comes in, they're telling us that the symptoms are minor, and uh, we'll test the tooth, it's testing within normal limits, and then we'll just kind of make a few adjustments and we'll bring the patient back in a week and maybe in two weeks. Um, but sometimes if that discomfort goes away, that's not always a good thing either, because sometimes the nerve is um, injured, and it ends up dying over time and that will also the symptoms will also go away once the nerve is dead and you don't want to leave a dead nerve in your tooth it might not be causing you any discomfort but there's bacteria there and you have to get the bacteria out of there your body's going to be trying to fight it off and it, it can become um, a, a health risk and once you've had the root canal do you then have to have the tooth crowned after that or not necessarily it depends I think most of the times especially posterior teeth or teeth that are in the back uh, almost every molar tooth um, after a root canal is done you know you're, you're kind of gutting out the top of it you're making an access hole into the tooth and um, so it's surrounded by walls of tooth structure that's hollow that are hollowed out even after the root canal is done uh, you're, you're biting on the tooth all the time it's putting lateral forces on the tooth and you can break off one of the walls of the tooth so a crown restoration afterwards will protect that root canal if you're doing a front tooth, however, and maybe there's trauma and a tooth, um, it's either inflamed and needs a root canal or dead and needs a root canal, more times than not, we can make a very conservative access to the back of the tooth, and then just a, a filling restoration will be adequate and is, is, is probably the better restoration or the restoration of choice. Now, what, what if somebody, um, the dentist refers someone to you for the root canal, um, and they say, well, I'd really rather not have the root canal the patient? The patient, yeah. What, what happens then? It depends on the case, of course. The, um, if, if a patient has to have a root canal, you have to have it. You really only have two options. If you're not going to root canal the tooth, uh, then you're going to need to have the tooth removed. As um, long as I tell my patients what is in their be best interest, I tell them what I would do if it were my mouth, they're welcome to proceed however they, they, they want to they proceed. If you're leaving a dead tooth in there or an infection in there, it, it can become life-threatening. It, it, if you're not going to get the root canal, I would encourage you to have that tooth removed. Okay. Uh, because it will it will cause much more stress for you down the road. All right, that's great advice. Yeah. All right, uh, we are talking with Dr. Richard Horwat. I know a lot of you are getting on the line right now, but we do need to take a break. But give us a call, 737-7587, if you have questions, comments about your mouth, your teeth. We're talking to the expert here. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back after this.